Hey guys, Johnny here. One of the comments I hear quite a bit when I mention I use Blender is that people will say they opened it up one time and it was just way too confusing and they shut it down immediately. So I wanted to put together a series of videos where I talk about some of the basics of using Blender. In this first video, I want to talk about just getting around the general interface of Blender. The first time you run Blender after installing it, you're going to come up with this window. This is the quick setup window. You'll have several options here. The language you want to use, if you want to use a different shortcut mapping, if you want to use the left or right mouse button to select object, what action you want your spacebar to take, and then what theme you'd like. Now if you're upgrading your version of Blender, you'll have the option to load your previous version settings here. The only change I recommend making in this particular window is to change the spacebar action from play to search. Then click save new settings to keep going. After that, you'll be presented with the normal splash screen that you'll see the next time you run Blender. For the purposes of this video, we're just going to create a new general file. If you're unfamiliar with 3D software, or if you're unfamiliar with Blender, this opening screen can be very confusing. We're going to break it down into its components. Up in the top left hand corner, you'll see the Blender icon. Clicking on this will give you simple options such as viewing the splash screen, about, and some other things that you really don't need to worry about at this point. Immediately to the right, you'll have the main program menus, such as your file for importing, saving, exporting, those sorts of options. Your standard edit menu, the render menu where you can render out images or animations, the window menu where you can work with various parts of Blender, and of course a help menu. Next to the menus, you have your workspace tabs. In more recent versions, Blender has introduced the idea of workspaces. There are many types of built-in workspaces, but you can also create your own. By clicking on these tabs, you'll see that the overall layout of Blender changes to match the tab that you've clicked. Each one of these tabs represents a different type of task that you might be undertaking. If you right-click on a tab, you'll have options to duplicate it, delete it, change its position, or move between workspaces. Most of the time, I'll just leave the existing tabs the way they are. But if there's one you know you're never going to use, you can click on it, right-click, and hit delete. This will shorten your list of tabs. For now, let's go to the layout menu, as that's the first tab that you find yourself in when opening a new Blender scene. To the right of your workspace tabs is your scene dropdown. Scenes allow you to work independently on different aspects of your project and jump between them within one file. In many cases, you'll just be using one scene per file. Next to scene are the view layers. View layers allow you to have multiple groupings of objects together in your scene, which you can turn on and off independently of each other. This is a slightly more advanced feature of Blender that we won't be covering right away. At the very bottom of the screen, you'll notice a helper bar. This bar will show you various things that you can do with your mouse. So currently, with my mouse in the 3D viewport, you'll see that left clicking allows me to select, left clicking and moving allows me to box select, middle mouse button allows me to rotate my view, and right click is an object context menu. We'll talk more about those in another video. Additionally, in the bottom right hand corner is your current version of Blender. In this case, 2.91.2. You can add additional information to this area by going to the Edit menu and Preferences, and under the Interface area, under Status Bar, you can show your scene statistics, your system memory in use, and your video memory in use. Between the top bar and the status bar is your workspace area in Blender. Your Blender workspace is comprised of viewports. In the corner of each viewport, you will have this icon. This allows you to select what type of viewport each section is. You can resize viewports by mousing over the line between them, and it will turn into an arrow. You can click and drag to resize your viewports. If you would like to add a viewport, 
mouse into one of the corners of a viewport and your mouse will turn into this crosshairs. By clicking and dragging into the viewport, you will split the current viewport into two viewports of the same type. These now work independently of one another. This is very handy if you want to work on one side of an object while still seeing the other side. Blender viewports can be split as often as you'd like in either the horizontal or the vertical direction. To remove a viewport, you need to combine it with another viewport that shares an edge of the same size. So for instance, this viewport and this viewport can be combined because they share this horizontal edge and it's the same length. In order to combine them, all I need to do is put my cursor in the bottom corner again, and instead of dragging into the window that I want to split into, I want to pull into the adjacent window that I want to delete. If I continue to hold down my mouse button and then mouse up, you'll see the area dims and an arrow shows me which way the other area will be expanded. So in this case, the top area will be expanded into the bottom area. And when I release the mouse button, they will combine. Now, say that I would like to get rid of this left-hand window. I currently can't because it doesn't share a full edge with any other window. It only shares half of this edge with this window, half of this edge with this window, and half of this edge with this window. So I'm going to need to align it with some others before I can do that. There are several ways that I could attack this problem, but probably the quickest would be to split this window this way, lining up its edge here. Now I can drag each of these right-hand viewports to the left and get the desired result. I can combine this top window with this bottom window and I'm back to the way I was at the beginning. If you want to set up a custom workspace for your project, one way to do that is to find a layout that matches most closely the layout you want to create. So if I want to use something very similar to this layout tab, but I don't want to change the layout tab, I can right click on layout and say duplicate. Now you'll see I've created a layout.001 workspace. I can now alter this one in any way that I want. In this case, I will make three 3D workspaces on the left-hand side and leave the right-hand side the way it is. Now you'll notice if I go back to the layout workspace, it's originally how it was, but now I can always come back to layout.001 to see this layout. Then that way I'm not constantly opening, closing, resizing, splitting and combining different workspaces. I can simply tab between the ones that I want. Another helpful keyboard shortcut is control space. This will allow you to take whatever viewport is currently under your mouse and turn it to full screen. If you want to return to your normal workspace, simply press control space again or click this back to previous button up in the top. You can always know you're in a full screen viewport when that back to previous shows up in the top bar. If you find that there are viewports that you rarely use in the default settings, such as this timeline bar at the bottom, and you don't want it cluttering up your screen, you can go ahead, combine it with your top one. Now you can save this file as your new startup file. Do this by going to File, Defaults, Save as Startup File. Be aware that everything currently in this file will now come up with every new Blender file you open. So in this case, if I were to go ahead and add a Suzanne the Monkey to this file and say Save Startup File, now if I say File, New General File, this is my new startup file. If you've found that you've really messed up your Blender scene, and you really just want your user interface to go back to the way it was, you can do that under File, Defaults, Load Factory Settings. 
This option will erase your startup file with the built-in startup file. All of your workspace layouts will return to normal and all of your other activities will return to the way they are when Blender was shipped. However, you will need to then save this as your new startup file. And now that I've done that, my new startup file is overwritten with the defaults. I hope this tour of the Blender user interface gives you a good jumping off point. In future videos, we'll be going over the viewports individually, looking at how to use things like the 3D viewport, the outliner, the property windows, etc. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button below. Also hit that subscribe button for updates on future videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day.